Okay, so after I got done spreading the graphite oxide onto the, the uh, substrate, the PET substrate, this is what it looked like. I let it dry overnight, and so in the morning, this is what it looked like. I had enough uh, of my sample to cover two substrates, so here's one I put in the disc. Now, in the paper it said that the disc ran six times in the light scribe device, so I ran this one six times, and as you can see, it didn't exactly burn the entire surface. Now, I, I, first I used this in my laptop uh, light scribe drive. That didn't do anything. I mean, there was a little bit here at the base that was like kind of turned black, but it really didn't do anything. So I put it in the tower in my tower drive, and that seemed to work a lot better. But as you can see, there's still some areas that didn't get completely reduced to graphene. But still, there's still some uh, samples that I can take, and so let me go through the process of how I did it. Basically, I took the CD, and I used this. It's called spray mount. It basically turns whatever surface you spray it onto into a post-it note. So you can post it, it'll stick there, then you can unstick it. So basically, I cut a little circle. You have to use light scribe discs, I found that out. I think they read this little area in there to make sure it's a light scribe disc, so I had to go out and buy some light scribe discs. Um, so I took a little cardstock, a little circle, sprayed that, let it dry, stuck that on there, then I sprayed the disc, and then I stuck the substrate on. Then I put it into the disc drive. So once that is done, then you can just kind of peel it off of there. Okay, and there it is. So, looking at the difference between oops, the two, this is the burned, that's the graphene, and this is still graphite oxide. So this one had a little bit thicker layer, this one didn't have as thick a layer as this one did, so I might throw this one in to see what it can do and see if it burns any better. Um, let's see, I do have a voltmeter here, we can do some, can show you, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see the reading on this voltmeter, so I'll do a resistance test. Um, you can see the outer part here where it didn't get burned, let's see, hopefully you can read that. Here where it didn't get burned, there's like no reading whatsoever. Now, here where it got reduced to graphene, we're showing about one and a half, about 1500 ohms. It tests better in some areas. There, about 900 ohms. So some areas are better than others. There across the whole disc we're reading about about 2,000 ohms. So it did work, not as good as I thought it would. I thought that the burning process would be the most straightforward process. Um, but, you know, I can still get some usable samples out of here to do some uh, testing of electrolytes. Now, um, in the paper they used um, aqueous electro electrolytes, which is just phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid. They used organic electrolytes um, and ionic liquid, which was the highest capacitance. The organic electrolyte and the ionic liquid, uh, liquid uh, ended up being like pretty much, I mean the ionic was a little bit higher than the organic, but they're both the highest. Um, they also used a polymer gel, um, which ended up uh, being a fully solid state uh, electrolyte. Um, 
So with that mixture, they just used a mixture of PVA, and, uh, which is polyvinyl alcohol, mixed with uh, uh, phosphoric acid as the electrolyte. And so that, that basically uh, was the separator and the electrolyte all in one. And that had about the same uh, capacitance as the aqueous electrolytes, which are just your phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid. Now, they used uh, a product called CellGuard, which is a polypro uh, polypropylene film, which is a, a porous membrane that allowed the electrolyte to, to work through there. Um, that's a material that's tough to get a hold of. Um, um, I think uh, there's a video on YouTube um, to take apart um, old lithium ion batteries and to salvage the polypropylene out of there. Now, for these small tests, I was thinking about, about using that to, to kind of test it against, say, like, just like one mil thick piece of paper or something like that as the separator. So maybe with this, um, with these first few uh, samples, I will go ahead and try and test out a few, uh, few different means of uh, achieving capacitance with uh, uh, readily found materials. Um, after that, there's another great uh, video on YouTube, uh, Making Graphene by the Bucket Load. So I'll probably uh, ramp up and see if I can make a uh, larger sheet of graphene. Now, there's, there's different ways than the LightScribe device on how to make the graphene from what I've read on the internet. People actually use even like the xenon flash from a, a camera. They'll just put the camera flash straight down on the graphite oxide, trigger it, and poof, it turns into graphene. So I, that might be interesting to try. Um, another way I saw um, a couple researchers from Rice University, they put their sample into a laser cutter. I assume they turned down the wattage so it didn't completely slice through the whole thing. But they were able to burn pretty intricate patterns um, on that. And so those, those things are, you know, wide beds, 18 by 24, something like that. So you could, theoretically, you could print a pretty big sheet of graphene using one of those. So I used to have access to one of those. I don't anymore. Um, but I know there's, there are laser cutting services around, so I might look into that as well. So anyhow, that's, uh, about where I'm at, um, at the moment. So next step, I'll probably go ahead and burn this other piece of, uh, this other substrate of, uh, graphite oxide and, uh, try and test out some, uh, electrolytes and, uh, see how that all, uh, ends up. So anyways, um, check back, uh, and, uh, hopefully I'll have some, uh, tests on some, uh, different, uh, uh, dielectrics and electrolytes and uh, get some uh, readings on those. Alright, thanks.